This episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN and by Caviar. Before we get to today's news stories, we should probably direct you、yeah. over to our previous video. This past weekend's episode of Weekly Weird News, which YouTube deemed to be so dangerous and bad that it was age restricted, demonetized, and Hidden from most of our subscribers' sub boxes, so you might not even know we released a video. Please a watch days it、ago. because it exists. We did do a video of、yeah. uh, Weekly Weird News last weekend. A pretty good one, I'd say. Yeah, you should watch it. Well, it's going to be like one of the top links in the description. Please, yeah, <laughs> please. We are in、uh, YouTube jail right now.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, it turns out talking about how hydroxychloroquine probably doesn't work for treating COVID, but llamas and cannabis might work. That was a bad idea. We should、part. probably bleep the c word there. Yeah. Well, all the c words.、Um, and the h word and the l word. I just want to know what. YouTube has against llamas.、It's、definitely that. I don't know, but if you missed that video, please go give it a watch. In the meantime, we're just going to have to, I guess, walk on eggshells for the foreseeable future.、Uh, whenever we talk about the pandemic, which is、uh, going to be tricky since it's, you know, kind of a big deal. Yeah.、Uh, anyways, with that out of the way, onto our first story. Millions of Americans staying at home are relying on Amazon to deliver essentials like groceries and cleaning products during the COVID-19 outbreak. For the first time, we're getting a glimpse inside Amazon's fulfillment centers to see just how the company is keeping its employees safe and healthy while delivering packages to your doorstep.、Uh, wait, what is happening? Yeah, that's that's correct. We didn't write that. That's not part of our script, so I don't even know how it got in there. Yeah, how did that get in there? All right, so on Sunday. Reporter Zach Rael of Oklahoma City's Coco Five News. He tweeted, <laughs> What a fun name! Tweeted this out. Just got an email from Amazon's PR team with a pre-edited news story and script to run in our shows. They are selling this as giving our viewers an inside look at the company's response to COVID-19. No, let us go inside a fulfillment center with our own cameras. And、uh, yeah, in the attached image, we see a news script featuring the exact wording that Ricky just read a second ago.、Uh, unlike most news scripts, though, this one was written by Amazon's PR department. No. Now, why would Amazon do this? Well, as we've covered several times over the last few years, they're a company that's not exactly known for treating their workers very well.、Uh, they they pretty much work people to the bone with absurdly high quotas and a bad track record for worker safety. And for the last few months, Amazon has been under increased scrutiny as warehouse employees protest that their health and safety is just not being protected enough while working during a pandemic. Okay. Now, sure, Amazon insists they're doing the best. And right now, if you Google Amazon fulfillment center coronavirus. Uh, the very top result is an official Amazon PR blog about what a great job they're doing. But、uh, an even better way to get the word out is to just send every local news station in the country a ready-made script and some video B-roll, and、uh, just hope that enough of them will go ahead and run what's essentially Amazon propaganda that's been dressed up to look like real news. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. So reporters like Zach Rael up there, he rightfully told Amazon to fuck right off with this bullshit. He's a real one. Yeah,、mm -hmm. <laughs> but、uh, you know, just two days after he leaked that script on Twitter, at least eleven local news stations across the country aired that segment, reading Amazon's words verbatim and playing the B-roll that Amazon sent them, all without actually disclosing the fact that they were essentially just reading an Amazon press release.、Mm. Check this shit out. Millions of Americans staying at home are relying on Amazon. Millions of Americans staying at home are relying on Amazon. Millions of Americans staying at home are relying on Amazon. Millions of Americans staying at home are relying on Amazon. And、uh, yeah, actually, it's it's not even the local news reporters doing most of the talking here. After those intro segments, they toss to a guy named Todd Walker in a way that makes it sound like Todd Walker is you know one of their reporters. He's on location, but、uh, no, Todd Walker is actually a PR manager at Amazon who. Happens to have previously been a broadcast journalist, and his narration makes up the bulk of these news reports. But it's so easy; they gave us a, a, a block of minutes that、yeah. we didn't have to work. We just ran their segment.、Hey. It's like. Everyone, go home at 4 p.m. today instead of five. <laughs>、oh, sorry,、boss. you're all working from home anyway. Yeah, But, no,、uh, yeah, this is just laziness. It sounds yeah, like. Well, according to Vice, quote on his LinkedIn page, Walker wrote that he quote got to dust off my reporting skills to give local markets their first look inside our fulfillment centers to see how Amazon is protecting the health and safety of its associates to continue delivering for you. News friends, the story is available to download in this link if you'd like to give your viewers inside access. I made a plug-and-play version as well as one that anchors and reporters. Can track themselves. It's already been shared in markets from Los Angeles to Lexington. <laughs> all the L's, right out there. all the L's, baby. Yeah. And、uh, the entire script, along with the B-roll, was publicly 
actually posted last week to Business Wire, a website companies use for press releases. Not even trying to hide it. Yeah. Just right out there in the open. And yeah, if this has given you a little bit of deja vu, it's probably because a little over two years ago, Sinclair Broadcasting got caught making around 200 of their local news stations read the exact same script, uh, warning their viewers to be wary of the liberal media and, uh, and its fake news. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of videos where, you know, they were playing them all on top of each other. It was creepy. But, uh, I mean, this Amazon thing, it's actually kind of even worse than that in some ways. I mean, at least with the Sinclair thing, the script came from corporate HQ. These Amazon segments, they're just free advertising for the most valuable company on earth. Optional, too. Yeah. Like, not like you're going to lose your job if you don't run this yeah. because I own Sinclair. <laughs> like, hey, if you want to be lazy today, yeah. we have a free segment We made for some you. news for you. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and a bunch of news stations, they just willingly ran with it, knowing exactly what they were doing. I mean, I got to give the, the anchors a little bit of the benefit of the doubt when they lead into it, because yeah. you'd assume that they're just like, from the producer, like, yeah, here's here's today's Yeah, it's thing. the producers and, like, station heads. They yeah. should be ashamed of themselves. Yes. I mean, yeah. Now these people are going to get bothered in the streets if they go out. And, like... I don't think this is a totally unique thing. I mean, a lot yeah. of local news coverage is essentially just free advertising, but it's never this blatant. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. It's a different story when you're reporting down at the local high school car wash when they're trying to raise money to go yeah. to, like, Epcot Center or something. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, blatant advertising for Amazon, not great. Not, not great. great. And I hope the anchors weren't in on it. I hope they were just reading their lines. Yeah, I hope so, too. It's just so weird. Like. Yeah. Come on. It is Gross strange. Line. Although, if you do Google Amazon COVID right now, uh, that the, I guess, second or third top story, which is bound to be the top story by tomorrow morning, is the guy who uh, lost his job because of the pandemic. So like, he hey, we're hiring to, down here at Amazon. And he was dead within two weeks. Yeah. Um, Not really a good case study for the Amazon's uh, health and safety uh, no. No. initiative, but, you know. Things happen. They also, like, it's apparently been bad for... Because, like, Amazon has basically forced a bunch of third-party businesses to operate, like, entirely within the Amazon marketplace mm -hmm. ecosystem. And then, you know, once Amazon, in, like, mid-March, they're like, hey, for the next uh, month or so, only essential items. Nothing else gets sold. So all these companies who have, like, shifted their entire business model onto Amazon now are just, like, fucked. Yeah. Like, they don't have their own website. They don't have their own uh, logistics or anything. They've been forced to use Amazon because it's Amazon's just the website that people shop. Also, on. we're all out of essential items, so nothing's shipping. Yeah, and anything you actually want is going to take four weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a fun ride, hasn't it, folks? Yeah. Well, as we've seen from news broadcasts around the world—well, not the world, <laughs> around America—it's apparently all over. We did it. Yeah. If you will it, there is no dream. We solved the virus. <laughs> we sure did. Great Anyways. job, America. It turns out chlorine was the cure the whole time. You yeah. just get in a pool get in a with pool, a thousand other people. Gulp down a little bit of that chlorine. <laughs> we are not. Uh, oh we're my we're God. fucking yeah. up again. Parody. Parody. Fuck. We're, we're making jokes here, people. This Stop. is going to get the same. They're, YouTube is trying to destroy this channel. It's They're trying to destroy this channel for having a few laughs. It's frustrating. It, I was very sad for two days straight. <laughs> I, was, I was legitimately it upset about it. It bums me out. It does. I looked at that and I was just like, fuck, man. Fuck. Anyways, let's move on to some sporting news. Obviously, most sports have been on hold for the last two months, aside from professional wrestling and the UFC. NASCAR returned earlier this month without fans in attendance, but before that, they were hosting esports races. And as you'll all recall, it was only a matter of days before a driver was caught saying the N-word into a hot mic. Yeah, and then there was, like, that other guy who they rage, targeted gamers. rage quitted, and there was another guy, I think, who, like, intentionally crashed during a race because he's just like, they wrecked someone. fuck this. Bad attitude. Yeah. Uh, other racing leagues have also shifted to esports during the pandemic, including Formula E, which is sort of like Formula One, but all the cars are electric. And Formula E recently had their own little esports scandal. Now, it didn't involve any racial slurs, uh, but it did involve a pretty bold attempt at cheating. Yeah, so in a charity race over the weekend raising money for UNICEF, Audi Formula E driver Daniel Opt was racing much better than usual, enough that other drivers were vocally suspicious during the stream that it wasn't actually him driving. Now, Daniel Opt did have a Zoom feed going, but apparently his face was blocked by a microphone. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> Uh, he ended up finishing the race in third place, despite never having placed better than 15th in previous esports races. Just a lucky day. And um, Formula E officials, they figured, hey, we might as well check this guy's IP address mm -hmm. after the race, just to, just to check. And uh, yeah, sure enough, the IP that Apt was using uh, could not have possibly been him. And uh, it turned out that Apt had uh, not been the one driving. 
Instead, 18-year-old pro gamer Lorenz Hertzing, who uh, competes in Formula E's like actual dedicated esports league, he had secretly filled in for Apt as a ringer. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> So this resulted in some pretty serious consequences for both of the guys. Uh, Abt got himself dropped by Team Audi over the incident and was fined 10,000 euros. And Hertzing has been banned from competing in Formula E esports. Uh, Abt, uh, he came out on Wednesday uh, with a video statement on the matter saying he didn't really see these esports races as legit competition. So he thought it'd be funny to do a little prank. <laughs> well, all he had to say was that he was on a VPN. Yeah. No, I was using a VPN to protect my privacy. VPN. Exactly. And they would have been like, oh, oh of course. that makes complete sense. Yeah. Anyways, uh, here's what he said. Quote, we wanted to document it and create a funny story for the fans with it. <laughs> He was literally trying to make a prank it video. It was literally a prank, bro. In, like, an official race. Wow. I love it. Well, things clearly didn't go the way that he thought they would. And uh, he's ruined. Uh, I, he'll, he'll be probably be, well, he dropped from Team Audi, but the fine's not that bad for him, I'm assuming. The the. The kid that was uh, the esports uh, yeah. competitor, his shit's over. Yeah, he was probably, I mean, he's like 18, so he's like, and also this this driver, Daniel Abt, like, his family has been, he's like from racing, like, royalty. His yeah. family has been involved in car racing for like 130 years. Like, his, a his great, 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 great grandfather started All it took a was racing a little gaming. company. <laughs> so, like, I'm sure he reached out to this gamer and he's like, hey, look, it's going to be great. You want to help me out with this prank? And he's like, well, this guy would have to be a fucking idiot if uh, to do something I that would get that, us in trouble. I hope the kid gets, you know, <laughs> a, deserves a bit more of a slap on the wrist. Because yeah, I you don't have, know. like, these pro drivers, like, come down and y y it's going to alter your decision making. It yeah. really is. He was, he was, uh, this driver was a, a bad influence on this gamer. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's frankly not fair. But yeah, now a bunch of the other Formula E drivers are just like, fuck this. I'm not streaming on Twitch anymore. It's like if, uh, if well, good, good. <laughs> But it's like if, uh, if like, Peyton Manning or something was like, yeah, I got to do this charity tournament, but I'm not really good at Madden. You want to, hey, kid, you want to, like, play for me? Like, you're going to say no? Yeah. Of course you're going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, fucking hilarious. The I, only fucked up part is if he was paying the kid and, like, the whole time it's for charity. He said he wasn't paying the kid. I don't know. We'll see. But Let uh, the kid go. This is just, like, such a fucking hilarious way to, like, sabotage your own career. Cheating gaming. in a video game. Video game. <laughs> gaming Not even once. Yeah. Gaming has ruined so many like professional sporting careers. Yeah. It in just like the a, last month and a half. Uh, you know, one of those scary commercials where it's like, this is your life. And it's like, yeah. hot babes, Success, money, yeah. in front of a house with a nice car. And it's like, this is your this is your life on gaming. And it's just like <laughs> pink slip, fucking tire around your neck. Losing just sitting, your on side of the, sitting on the side of the road with one of those like red sacks hanging off a stick. Yeah. Tragic. Yeah. Yeah, real sad. Not even once. Uh, Anyways, yeah. speaking of telling lies, there is a big fight brewing between the President of the United States and his favorite social media website. Jack, I thought we were friends. <laughs> so for as long as he's been involved in politics, Donald Trump has used Twitter as his primary means of communicating with the public. And this is uh, often involved what would charitably be described as half-truths and sometimes just outright fucking lies. Yes. This week, um, Twitter rolled out an interesting new feature that they debuted underneath some Trump tweets in which he falsely claimed that vote by mail leads to widespread election fraud. And um, yeah. he doesn't seem too happy about this. Well, the tweets in question from Tuesday read, there is no way, zero, that mail-in ballots will be anything less than substantially fraudulent. Mailboxes will be robbed, ballots will be forged, and even illegally printed out and fraudulently signed. The governor of California is sending ballots to millions of people. Anyone living in the state, no matter who they are or how they got there, will get one. That will be followed up with professionals telling all of these people, many of whom have never even thought of voting before, how and for whom to vote. This will be a rigged election. No way. So, of course, all of that is total fucking bullshit. Um, a bunch of states including ours, have been allowing voting by mail for a very long time. Yes, there's a long precedent set uh, for this. Some states, at this point, do all of their voting entirely by mail. Isn't that or Oregon does it by mail? I think like Colorado, Oregon, Washington. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's a thing. It's, this is not some like newfangled idea. It's Trump's been happening new, for a uh, long time. The press secretary has voted by mail like 10 Every or 11 times. Yeah. 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 It, a lot of people do this. It's, it's, it's very normal. The military. They don't just give everyone a ballot. They give it to you if you register to vote, yeah. which is like, you know, there's prerequisites for that. There's also a reason that like rummaging through people's mail is literally a felony. Yeah. yeah. 
Also, like they have your signatures on file, and if your signature on your mail-in ballot is even slightly like off from what they have on record, they will toss it out. It's actually kind of a big problem. Yeah. But so yeah, I mean, like, there's no evidence that uh, vote by mail leads to increased voter fraud. It mm -hmm. just leads to increased um, election turnout. Yes. But uh, what this comes down to is Republicans like it when it's harder for like working class people to vote because uh, it usually makes it easier for them to win. Yes. That's that's it. Anyways, unlike the numerous previous Trump tweets where he has lied, uh, these ones, they came with a fun little button underneath them. I love this. The way it is displayed is so hilarious because it looks like it's part of his tweet. Yeah. Like, hey, click here to find out more. But then it just refutes everything that he said. Yeah. I love the way that they displayed it. Yeah. Yeah. So it says, uh, get the facts about mail-in ballots. It takes you to a page featuring just a bunch of fact-checking regarding these kinds of claims. A lot of data to back up the fact that what he's saying is bullshit. And uh, yeah, so far, this is the only, this is the one time this feature has been deployed. Yeah. It was under these two back-to-back uh, -back They did Trump make, tweets. The, the one mistake they made is citing like CNN in oh, part of, of course, it. Oh, of course, like. But it was funny, like as soon as I saw that, as soon as I saw it, I put that post up where I was just like, this man is about to lose his yeah, fucking he mind. Is, he is on the toilet just obliterating. Yeah. He is spewing brown stuff out the end in it's, it's on the roof. It's shooting back yeah, up. Yeah, he's, he's like levitating. So if you predicted uh, that uh, maybe Donald Trump did not react very well to this, you would be right. <laughs> he is very mad. Uh, Trump spokeswoman Kellyanne Conway came out almost immediately with a bunch of old tweets from Twitter's head of site integrity where he, he writes negatively about the Trump administration, claiming that this was proof that Twitter was unfairly targeting the president, despite the fact that he met with Jack. Apparently, they were on friendly terms. Yeah. Also, I mean, like, Twitter has a lot of employees. They're just yeah, like, yeah. look, there's this one there's guy. This, this guy doesn't like him. This one uh, tech guy. Company employee Where's the in integrity? Silicon Valley uh, is not a fan of Donald Trump. Oh, the humanity. Yeah. Well, whenever they wheel out Ken Kelly and Conway, it's always to say some fucking crazy bullshit. That's right. She's the best at it. Yeah. That's because her husband just gives it to her every night. That's right. <laughs> A loving marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, on Wednesday morning, Trump tweeted, quote, Twitter has now shown that everything we have been saying about them and their other compatriots is correct. Big action to follow. Uh, why is he right? Like, his phrasing is always so fucking well, weird. Because he's a fucking carnival barker. Yeah. That's why. Like, do you want to see behind this thing behind the curtain? Well, surely, startle your senses. Yeah. Can you wait to see it? Well, one day we will pull back the curtain. Big action to follow. Yeah. Uh, anyways, later that day, White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany, a fucking dime piece. She looks great. A real smoke show. <laughs> <laughs> she told reporters that Trump is getting ready to sign an executive order, quote, pertaining to social media. Oh, boy. We're in trouble. Here we go. If I'm going to get a spanking from anyone, it's got to yeah. be Kaylee McEnany. It's been an honor <laughs> posting with you. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow we get out the violins yeah. and we start playing Twitter all the way Twitter is over, folks. Yeah. See, this executive order, it's not expected to be revealed until sometime Thursday. No one really knows what it is. But... <laughs> well, that's the whole point. Uh, it could be anything. Yeah. It's the mystery Ooh, box. What's behind... <laughs> Door number one. It's going to be very interesting to see what exactly it is about. Like, mm -hmm. is Trump going to make it illegal for social media websites to use fact-checking links under know. posts by the president? Yeah. Is he going to force Twitter to give Jacob Wool his account back? We don't know. So I guess find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the edge of my seat about this. I can't this wait to see it. Uh, yeah, I, what I said before we started filming was that, like, what I assume it's going to be is a executive order that bars Twitter from altering in any way, tweets that come from the White House or, like, his administration. Like, they're not allowed, and that would be considered altering it by yeah, adding something to it. but if that, like, like all, every, like, First Amendment lawyer, uh, like, constitutional law lawyer on Twitter was just, like, salivating when yeah. they saw this. So, like, oh, boy, can't, <laughs> can't wait for whatever the fuck this is. Yeah. It's going to get, like, shut down by, like, U.S. district courts, like, immediately for being completely unconstitutional. Yeah. Very exciting, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what exactly our president has in store for us. Wow. Yeah. Until then, though, it's time for some ads, starting with this week's first sponsor. Uh, a sponsor that uh, 
Formula E driver Daniel Abt sure wishes he had used yeah. Express VPN. A scapegoat. <laughs> yeah. It could have been a great scapegoat. Yeah. Uh, you ever search for something online that maybe you wouldn't want other people to know about? Well, of course you have. Who hasn't? We were all young once. Mm-hmm. Maybe you thought you were being clever by firing up an incognito window so that none of it saves to your history. Well, we hate to break it to you. Incognito mode doesn't actually hide your online activity. It doesn't matter what mode you use or how many times you clear your browsing history, your ISP can still see every single single dirty little website that you've ever visited. That's why whenever we're at home and we're browsing without a care in the world, we don't go online without using ExpressVPN. Doesn't matter if you get your internet from Verizon or Comcast or some other terrible company. (laughs) One of the four others, I guess. (laughs) ISPs in the US, they can (laughs) legally sell your information to ad companies. But ExpressVPN is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your ISP can't see the sites you visit. ExpressVPN also keeps all of your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. But most of the time, you won't even realize you have ExpressVPN on. It just runs seamlessly in the background and is so easy to use, all you got to do is tap one button and boom, you're protected. ExpressVPN is also available on all your devices, phones, computers, even your smart TV. So there's no excuse for not using it. Protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by CNET and Wired. And visit our exclusive link, expressvpn.com newsday, and you can get an extra three months for free on a one-year package. That is expressvpn.com slash newsday, expressvpn.com slash newsday to learn more. And this episode is sponsored by Caviar. Don't feel like cooking tonight? Nope, too lazy. Maybe you just realized you're not very good at cooking? Maybe that's you, not me, but... uh... Yeah, well, whatever. Get the Caviar app and get local restaurants delivered right to you. Get the Caviar app, get the food you want. Mm -hmm. Their curated list of options offer quality meals with the convenience of in-app ordering. There are a lot of delivery apps out there, but Caviar is the go-to place to find local restaurants that can be delivered right to your doorstep. Caviar is available in over 25 major U.S. cities, and there are plenty of options to choose from. With the Caviar app, you can actually get the food you really want. From breakfast tacos to margarita pizza to a falafel sandwich, you can find quality food for whatever you're in the mood for on Caviar. So get the Caviar app today. Get delivery. Get the food you want. And just for our viewers, Caviar is offering $10 off an order of $20 or more. All you have to do is put in the offer code code NEWSDAY at checkout. That's $10 off a purchase of $20 or more with offer code NEWSDAY. Download Caviar on the App Store or Google Play Store and use the offer code NEWSDAY for $10 off of an order of $20 or more. It's like free money that equals almost free food. Mm-hmm. Well, some free food. Feed yourself. Those fries are going to be free. Thanks. That's right. Anyways, let's get uh, over to our good buddy, still in quarantine, still in a lush backyard. Living probably. his best life. Yeah, that's Phil Larigo. So, Phil, let us know about some news. There's a trope that's been around as long as the internet. Bro, when I die, you need to delete my browser history. And it doesn't matter who you are, you get the joke. And you can buy this beat ass joke on a shirt at Cheese Tees or Snog Tees or Redbubble's got a few options. And whether it's porn, fan fiction, an embarrassing medical condition, or you're researching Heath Ledger Joker Makeup Tutorial 2020, You probably don't want other people to see what you've been searching for because it's a very personal, direct line right to your sick brain. So in addition to your parents, your crush, your ex, all being on a list of people, you don't want to see your browser history. The government's probably near the top of that list as well. And as of 2001, the U.S. government has been able to see what you searched for and where you surfed on the Internet. They didn't even need a warrant. It seems like an overreach, right? Well, you have Section 215 of USA Patriot Act to thank for that. George Bush II administrations passed in response to 9-11 and the 2001 anthrax attacks. The Patriot Act was set to expire in 2005. It was renewed with bipartisan support, which was a bummer for pretty much everyone who didn't vote for it. But then Obama came in in 2008 and he extended Section 215 in 2011. And then again in 2015. But our day came on March 15, 2020, when Section 215 finally expired. So you know what that means. Mm, Not so fast. It was a back and forth saga when it came to the fate of Section 215. On May 13th, the Senate voted to stop the FBI warrantless access to search history. And it failed by one vote. 
So now the vote's moving on to the House of Representatives, where it may stand more of a chance to protect civilians from baseless FBI snooping. So let me tell you, this isn't the usual Democrats and Republicans taking opposite sides and voting along party lines, which is kind of what everything else feels like these days. You got Trump, a Republican, who tweeted, I hope all Republican House members vote no on FISA until such time as our country is able to determine how and why the greatest political, criminal, and subversive scandal in the U.S. history took place. He's uh, thinly veiled talking about his beef with Obama and the Obama administration, uh, stemming from when they had the FBI investigate his campaign to uh, where they justify it. It's kind of fifty. this article says no. So I will, uh, I'll keep you updated on how this shakes out, but just in the meantime, just know the FBI can see your browser history. They can see it before, but you know what they can't see? Your lock screen. It's not really a win, but a judge ruled that the FBI needs one of those pesky warrants to see your phone's lock screen. Browser history, lock screen. If you ask me, the browser history seems like the one that you should probably, you know, need the warrant for. But anyway, a guy named Joseph Sam was arrested in Washington in 2019. The FBI took a photo of his phone's lock screen, which had the info of one of his contacts. His lawyer argued that the FBI needed a warrant to do that. A judge agreed, and as of now, the FBI needs a warrant to look at your lock screen, even if it's just a picture of your dog. So I'll keep a paranoid eye on both these stories as they develop, but you know, come on. We, we kind of knew all along the FBI, warrant or not, they can see what you want if they're motivated. If law enforcement's motivated, they'll, they'll get the warrant. So, I mean, I'm just lucky that the stuff that I'm into is leaked. Well, hold on, let me just check real quick. Okay, yeah, well, it's still legal. Dodged a bullet there. So now I can get my makeup on and work on my, my <clears throat> you want to know how I got these scars? No, that's not it. it's like a <clears throat> you want to know how I got, no, that's not it. <clears throat> you want to know, <clears throat> it hurts my voice. <clears throat> <clears throat> you Thanks, Phil. Yeah, what a wonderful, what a wonderful thing. Uh, Really quick update before we go. The rocket didn't go up. The rocket, the clouds uh, won today. Who would win? This giant fucking reusable rocket or one cloudy boy? Yeah, <laughs> old man yells one. at cloud. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, it's been rescheduled to Saturday, Saturday at 12.30 Pacific, 3.30. Elon's got to be so Eastern. fucking mad. Because, like, he successfully got, like, Alameda County to back down yeah. over his factory. But you can't argue with the cloud. Here's you can't the argue with the weather. I know that there's a lot of reasons why they do it in Florida, specifically the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. But <laughs> the Florida has the worst, most unpredictable weather at all times. I lived there for a very long time. Three o'clock rolls around. Oh, here's a random thunderstorm. Yeah. Uh, I went when I was young, a very young boy. I went to go see the shuttle launch twice. Both times the launch was scrubbed. Yeah, that's like, it's it's risky. These things they get canceled a lot. I mean, even yeah. when they do, like I, I remember watching one of the the shuttle launches on TV when I was a kid in yeah. in class, and uh, you know during the entire like hour and a half class period, it never launched because like every, it kept getting pushed back for like various. Well, reasons. that was the thing. They were like boring as fuck. This specifically today, they were like uh, the launch window is now ten minutes after when you can go, but they had an, uh, I forget what they called it like an ultimate uh, yeah. launch time, uh, so they couldn't extend it for this one specifically. Uh, so they didn't launch it. It's going to go up Saturday. And I'll say what I said on Twitter. Like, I, uh, Elon Musk critique aside, this is very cool. This is a very big moment. The new space suits look... Uh, they look tight they as look hell. They great. Yeah, they look great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but everything looks cool. This is a very big moment. Uh, there's a lot to be said about a private company being the one that is launching astronauts I into space. I don't love it. Not a, not a big fan of it, but you know what? When it comes down to it, I love rockets. I love fighter jets, and I love guns. I like choo-choo trains. <laughs> I like I like big trains. I like to eat. I like to fight. Yeah. I'm real. All things that should be heavily regulated but are still cool to look at. That's right. Yes. That's right. And play with if you're allowed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, stay tuned for uh, that rocket. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it goes up sometime. Yeah. And I hope everyone's safe and they have a great time. Yeah. I don't think that they're like thinking about like having a great time, but I hope that they uh, it's all successful. I'd be a little stressed the, out. The the emergency systems on it, did you see like the the display of how it works? And they tested it 
how it works. It's like it launches off of the actual like Titan rocket faster than it's going and mm. then puts the shoots out. Okay. So very cool. Looks looks like everything's as safe as possible. I mean, Tom Cruise is going to be going up in this thing, so it's got to be super yeah. safe. Yeah. Also, it was very annoying because the the, the two astronauts' names are uh, uh, was it Bob and Doug, like Mackenzie, like, like the strange brew guy. Hey, take off, hoser! We're going into space. <laughs> and they kept saying their names, and I was just like, oh man, okay. Well, anyways, that's something to look forward to on Saturday. Yeah. We got the Trump uh, surprise box tomorrow. What is he going to do with Twitter? <laughs> and then we have the the launch on Saturday, twelve thirty Pacific, three thirty Eastern, I believe. Uh, so lots to look forward to this yeah. week. Meanwhile, though, we we implore you again, if please. You, if you haven't watched, I, I hope that he'll even let me embed it. It on might the side. not. It might not. I don't know the rules. There. If it doesn't, go to the literally go to our channel page and click videos yeah. and click the most recent weekly weird. Make sure you're signed in. Yeah, to you gotta, watch it. You gotta get past the age gate. And, and please watch it ten times. <laughs> Eighteen and over only. Yeah, please yeah. watch it ten. Watch times. it ten times, please. We need the views. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you soon. Bye bye.